Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim uh, My name is Ahmadullah Ibrahim Inshallah we're going to talk um, about the basal ganglia and um, brain transverse sections um, The basal ganglia um, it's really different to know that um, we divide it um, differently um, according to, to its developmental origin and um, according to how it is in, in our human body in, in the adult human body, how it is present anatomically. So developmentally, um, the basal ganglia nuclei are, are either peleus striatum or neus striatum. In our body, these nuclei are arranged as six nuclei. Three of them <coughs> are closely related, and we call them anatomical nuclei, um, as um, the caudate, the lentiform, and the colostrum. Um, and three functionally related nuclei and three functionally related nuclei as the subthalamus, the red nucleus and the substantia nigra. Um, also it is noteworthy that the amygdaloid nucleus or the amygdala um, is part of the limbic system as we spoke of earlier in an earlier video um, but it is anatomically related to the basal ganglia, but functionally it is part of the limbic system. We're going to start with the caudate nucleus, and here it is um, in a view, the, the, the purple phantom here, this is the caudate nucleus. As you can see it is C-shaped, inverted C-shaped, and lies in its concavity, the lentiform nucleus. Now this is the head of caudate, this is the body. And this is the tail. And as you can see here, the tail of caudate and the amygdala are continuous with each other. Um, the other function related nuclei is the claustrum, and it lies just over or in bit or covering, um, so to speak, these two nuclei, as we will see right now. Again, this is the head, body, and tail of caudate. It's important to know that the tail is continuous with the amygdala and the head is continuous with the lentiform nucleus, which by the way consists of globus pallidus and putamen. Um, over here in this um, sort of cleft lies the internal capsule. Um, it's better seen in a transverse section. And as I said, the claustrum covers these structures. Okay, um, now we talk about the caudal more in detail. Um, it's very important in the book, page 74, um, that we know the, the, the relations of the caudate nucleus. As we can see here, um, if, if you read it from the book or from a table like in this um, slide, it's, it's going to be very confusing. But if you look at the diagram here, the relation makes more sense. Um, as you can see there, this is the lateral ventricle in blue and this is the caudate nucleus. The head of the caudate bulges inwards in the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle. The body forms the floor of the body of the lateral ventricle while the roof surprisingly forms um, while the tail sorry surprisingly forms the roof of the posterior horn of the lateral ventricle. Again this is the, the diagram that we spoke of um, and here are the thalamus triadvin and the stria terminalis. The head of caudate lies in the frontal lobe, body lies in the parietal lobe, and tail lies in the temporal lobe. The head is continuous with the lentiform, the tail is continuous with the amygdala, and the body is related um, to, in, uh, is separated um, from the lentiform by the internal capsule, as well as the head. This is another view. This is the, the other um, hemisphere. As you can see here, this is the caudate nucleus, and this is the lentiform, while this is the lateral ventricle. Um, and before we start the lentiform nucleus, this is the internal capsule, as we stated earlier, which separates the head of caudate from the lentiform um, nucleus. The lentiform nucleus con consists of globus pallidus, which is goa, or medially, and the putamen, which is laterally. Um, they are separated um, by this small strip of white matter called external medullary lamina. It's very important um, um, to remember this external medullary lamina. 
this is the internal capsule right here so if we talk about the relations of the the lentiform we can say that the globus pallidus is separated from the thalamus and the caudate by the internal capsule while the putum is separated from the colostrum this is the colostrum the gray matter strip right here the putum is separated from the colostrum by external capsule so as we can see here internal capsule external capsule and right here is the extreme capsule as we will see right now now we, we talk about the colostrum. This this is the colostrum right here. Its medial relation is the external capsule, which is separated from the lentiform nucleus, particularly putamen. And laterally, um, separating it from the insula is the extreme capsule. And it is of unknown function. That's why we don't we're not gonna talk about it anymore. And as you can see, um, as I mentioned earlier, um, we have to regard the basal ganglia developmentally. So the neus triatum and the pileus triatum. The pileus triatum forms the globus pallidus, and um, its fibers are mainly made of. of uh, uh, they have large neurons, and this is the efferent part of the basal ganglia. So the fibers that arise from the basal ganglia, its efferents, um, with an e arise from the globus pallidus, which is, by the way, divided into globus pallidus inhibitory and globus pallidus excitatory. On the other hand, the neus triatum has small neurons, and it is the afferent part of basal ganglia, which receives um, fibers from other parts of the CNS. And right here is an explanation. Um, this is a circuit. It, we have two circuits in, um, in the basal ganglia, and they are very important. They are perhaps the most important part of, of, of today's lesson. Um, there are two circuits, as I mentioned. Um, they are both closed circuits. You know, I don't know how a circuit might be open, but they are both closed circuits. We have substantia nigra, a two-way connection that uses dopamine to the neostriatum. Also, the neostriatum is included in the second circuit, which starts at the premotor cortex and sends fibers to the neostriatum, which sends it to globus pallidus or pileostriatum, which sends it to the an anterior um, ventral nucleus of the thalamus, which sends it back to the motor and premotor cortex. So, right here we have neostriatum, which is sort of a link between the two circuits because the neostriatum is also connected to substantia nigra, if we assume it's right here. Also in the book we have um, palestriatum connection with palidofugal fibers, or through palidofugal fibers to the thalamus, subthalamus, red nucleus, substantia nigra, inferior liver nucleus, and reticular formation, mainly to the functionally related nuclei. Next up is the arterial supply of the basal ganglia. Now again, to revise, here's the codate. Here it's 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 dotted because it, it it's it's in a different plane. This is the thalamus. So here's the head of codate, body, and tail of codate, putamen, globus pallidus, um, and colostrum, right here. The interior part of, of, of these nuclei is supplied by central branches of the anterior cerebral artery. It's very important. Um, in, in, in the MCQ to to note uh, the difference between central branches and, and, and cortical um, branches. Whatever is inside the hemisphere is supplied by central branches. And as we can see here, anteriorly it's supplied by the anterior cerebral artery, while the rest is supplied by the middle cerebral um, artery. The venous drainage is by the thalamus triate vein, which is as we as we've seen earlier is in a group between the corpus striatum and the thalamus what exactly is the corpus um, striatum it is the caudate and the putamen um, together um, or the knee of striatum really and uh, it was very hard to find a diagram for the thalamus striate vein I have no idea why but this is this blue line right here it's just important to know that it's in a groove between corpus striatum and the thalamus. Very easy is the lesions of the basal ganglia. Um, it is also related to the arterial supply, so you need to, to memorize the arterial supply very well. 
because that's usually how lesion happens in the basal ganglia. Perhaps the most famous is, is the lesion in the substantia nigra and the dopaminergic connection with the knee striatum, which produces Parkinsonism. I think everyone knows about this one. Um, the rest are really easy to know. Codate, chorea, lentiform produces acetosis, and lesion in the th thalamus produces amebolismus. It's all physiology and it's um, very easy to know. And to consolidate what we just spoke of, we are going to see some brain transfer sections. We start with viewing how we took our plane. As you can see here, we're going to cut through um, the geno of corpus callosum. We're going to cut through the splenium. And we're going to be cutting um, right here through the fornix. And frontal cortex and here is what it looks like this is the codate head of codate if, 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 if I point an arrow here you should say head of codate and not codate um, right here is the putamen external medullary lamina very important to know this is the globus pallidus thalamus anterior limb geno and posterior limb of internal capsule claustrum external capsule extreme capsule insula Right here is the geno of corpus callosum. Right here is the splenium of corpus callosum. This is forceps minor, which connects the two adjacent or two opposite frontal cortex. And here's the forceps major. This is the interior horns of the lateral ventricle. Septum pellucidum. Right here is the third ventricle following is the posterior horn of lateral ventricle, head of caudate, lentiform, which is putamen, corpus pallidus, thalamus, anterior geno, posterior, stromal capsule, colostrum, extreme capsule, and insula. Ah, very, 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 very important, especially in practicals and in jars and whatnot. What is this, um, my fellow doctors? This is the posterior horn of lateral ventricle. So related to it laterally is three structures from lateral, uh, from medial to lateral, named uh, TOI, T O I, which are the tapetum, the optic radiation, and the inferior longitudinal fasciculus. Not the inferior longitudinal bundle, not the inferior longitudinal anything else, which is important for MCQ. And this is the tapetum as we can see here so they're related lateral to the posterior uh, horn of lateral ventricle it's very confusing if you look at it from, it's very confusing if you look at it from uh, a written point of view so that was it um, transfer sections and basically angle it's really easy all we have to know are the connections and um, I think after seeing so many pictures it's 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 hard to 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 forget about to forget about it. We need to remember um the different divisions, what is neostratum, what is polystratum, and what are the three anatomically uh related nuclei and what are the three functionally related ones, which are by the way the red nucleus, the subthalamus, um and um the substantia nigra. Different lesions are also important to not forget. Thank you very much. And next we will be doing, I think, uh, the white matter of the cerebral hemispheres. It's another hard part and um, it needs a lot of diagrams and a lot of explanation. So be sure to, to take a look at it and good luck.